Hey y'all! Welcome to the Wildflower Magic Podcast. My name is Katie. I live in Virginia Beach with my partner and our three dogs, two cats, and our bunny. I work at my local yarn store, so I always have some fibery goodness going on that I have not podcasted in a hot minute. So if you stuck around, thank you. I really appreciate it. I didn't intend to be gone for so long. I just got busy, I guess. I don't know. Really, what it is, is that I've been on a starting things kick and not a finishing things kick. So I felt repetitive showing the same works in progress all the time with like no finished objects is really what it was, which is a kind of a silly stipulation to put on myself. If I'm just doing this for fun, I should be able to just show you whatever I want, right? But today I have finished objects. Look, look what I did. I finished my first sweater. So this is the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Made Designs. This is a DK weight sweater. The yarn I used is by Harrisville. It's their Daylights collection. So it's 100% Cormo wool from Maryland in the United States. The colorway is called Lint. It doesn't show up super well on camera, but there are flecks of like purple throughout here, which is why it's called Lint. They have, uh, this whole line has like just little subtle hints of different colors and I think they're very pretty. But anyways, um, I used Cormo wool. This is 100% Cormo wool, which I learned is Cormo sheep are a like crossbreed between Merino and Corydale. So I thought that was super cool. Modifications. I have to think about this. I did a one by one twisted rib. I think she calls for just a two by two rib. I really like twisted rib. I think it looks nice. So I decided to do that. I also did a German twisted cast on instead of a tubular cast on. Um, I did do the Kitchener's instead of a tubular bind off. I did a Kitchener stitch, like a sewn bind off. Is that what it's called? It's the same thing as a Kitchener stitch, I guess. Anyways, I think it looks nice and it matches the ribbing, which is nice. Um, I made my sleeves extra long because I like to wear them like this a lot. So the way that I did my sleeves is I didn't really pay attention to the pattern. I just kept trying it on. It's a top down sweater, so I could try it on as I went. So I just kept trying it on and marking where I did decreases with little stitch markers and then did the second sleeve the same way. So I didn't bother with like counting and all that stuff. I just kind of wung it. And it worked out. So here we are. Um, let me sit up a little bit so you can see the length. So I made it cropped. My belly button is like right here. So this is about where my high-waisted jeans hit when that's how I decide to wear it. So I can kind of do a little tuck right there if I want to. Um, my waist shaping, I just knit straight here and then did rapid decreases right here before the ribbing, which Jessie made lined out in her... Um, in her instructions, so it was pretty easy to follow. Great beginner sweater pattern. This was, like I said, my first sweater, and it went beautifully. It took me like two and a half weeks start to finish, so that was super cool. Uh, when I blocked this, I put like a splash of fabric softener in it, but I mostly just soaked it. Um, this is a very wooly, like rustic wool, so a lot of people find this very scratchy. I love how it feels, but that's just me. Like my partner, Alan could not wear this. He thinks it's incredibly scratchy, but I adore it. It is, however, hundred degrees outside today. <laughs> it's a little toasty, but um, I just came from, I was working today. I worked at the yarn store and at the store, we all wanna wear our hand knits, so we keep it kinda of cold in there. So it usually works out if I have like a dress or something on to wear it in the store. And also I had to wear it for the podcast, right? So we're just gonna suck it up and be hot for a little bit. It's fine. <laughs> my pin on here, might be easier to just take it off and show you rather than like, uh, it says love on it. Mm, we're not focusing. Anyways, it's a little planet that says love. It's one of my pride pins. I don't remember where I got it. Maybe Amazon a while ago, but I don't know. Anyways, um, oh, the other thing that I'm wearing that is super fun 
is, does that work? There we go. Look at these earrings. So these are little, like, little scissors, little snips, little snips. And they are super glittery, as I think that's coming out pretty good. They're super glittery. These are from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. Uh, I love them. They are so lightweight. I'm not going to be able to get this back in gracefully because I'm on camera, of course. Uh, these are so incredibly lightweight. I wasn't sure that I was going to enjoy wearing them because I don't typically do big dangly earrings. But they're so lightweight. They do get tangled in my hair a lot. But everything gets tangled in my hair a lot. That's not a reflection of the product. That's a reflection of my hair. But uh, they're so light. I forget that I have them in, which is wild. So these are so cool. I wear them all the time now. <laughs> um, I think that's all the cool things that I'm wearing right now. But yeah, I'm super excited about my sweater. I have worn it a ton. I've only blocked it once, and I've worn it like almost every day since, like, as a sweatshirt, like, take it on when I get cold, take it off when I get hot kind of thing. Not, like, as an outfit piece every day, but, like, I'll put it on when Alan turns the air conditioning down. It's wonderful. I love it so much. It fits perfectly. Highly recommend the pattern. Highly recommend the yarn if you can handle rustic yarns. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay, next. That's the only thing I finished, because I kind of have been in a starting things, a cast on mood. We've had a cast on party over here and not a lot of finishing has happened, which is not super like me. Usually I work kind of focus on one project and really get it done. Not right now. I did with this, which is why I got done so quickly. I, this is all I wanted to work on. I was so excited about it. Uh, but now I have a lot of works in progress to show you. <laughs> I have several socks that are in progress, but I'm not going to show you all of them. I have two that I don't think I'm going to show because I, I don't think I've touched them since the last podcast, so there's no point. These ones, I don't remember if I showed the finished one. I think I did. I think I finished this before my last podcast, but whatever. I'm almost done with the leg of the second one. Uh, the yarn here is Twisted Ambition, Don't Rock the Jukebox, and Sheep Graffiti Fall Orange. And the pattern is called Brick Socks. A fun texture pattern. Almost done with the leg of the second one. These are for Allen, so the cuff is knit on a US size zero. I do twist one by one ribbing. I did not twist my rib this time. I just did one by one ribbing for like 25 rounds. And then I start the pattern on a US size one. And these have 72 stitches cast on, so. All of my socks, I do slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset. It's my favorite. And, yeah, that's about it for those. I Those are kind of high on the priority list to get done just because I want to, I want to give them to him. He gets so excited when I give him socks, so I need to give him a new pair so that he's excited. <laughs> this is the morning coffee socks by the Crazy Sock Lady. The yarn is Patina by 29 Bridges. It's a sock set. It actually, I accidentally bought it twice so I can show you what it looked like when I got it. This is them. So, so pretty. This is a little bit more yellow, more like, yeah, more like that. That's, that's pretty true. So I have one sock done, and the reason that I only have one sock done is because I had my second sock in a project bag, and I left it outside, and it rained, and my project bag, like, bled pink all over my second sock. So my second sock has pink all over. I think I was, I was like, I was about to start the heel, and it has pink all over it. So I reskeined the yarn so that it could dry, like reskeined the yarn and then hung it up so it could dry really thoroughly. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do about it yet. I want to try to wash it and see if I can get the pink to come out, but it's been on timeout because I am grumpy about it. I really want to get the second sock done, but because I love this, it's gorgeous. And obviously I love the yarn because I bought it twice. <laughs> But I'm grumpy about the second half of this game getting ruined. 
and if I can't save it, I mean, I'll just use, I'll just use this one, but I wanted to use this for something else, so we'll see. We'll see what happens when I take it out of timeout. I'll get there later. <laughs> uh, the next project that I want to show you is called the Bajagi Shawl. It's by the, the designer's like tag name or handle is Knit Boop. It is not available. The pattern is not available on Ravelry anymore. It is on her website only, but it's a free download now and totally worth it. So I'll show you the yarn first. This is both of these are by Life in the Long Grass. Let me pull the tag out so I remember the color name. Pink Haze. Oops, sorry, the camera's over here. I forgot. <laughs> this is Pink Haze. Life in the Long Grass. It's their silk blend, so it's a 50% silk, 50% merino blend. So it is incredibly soft and beautiful for shawls. It's my favorite for shawls. And then the other one is called Bouquet. Like a cream color with pinks and purples and yellows and greens. Very pretty. Also on their silky uh, merino silk blend. And this is the first part of the shawl. So it's a, um, we have like our garter stitch section down here. And then this is mosaic knitting. Super, super pretty. It's a very simple pattern and she does a great job of uh, explaining how to do the mosaic piece. It's not as hard as people think. I'm actually doing a class on this shawl right now, which is why it's only to here because I really just wanted to finish it, but I'm doing a class. So we're all doing it together. So I'm waiting like I'm supposed to. The next section is a lace section. I wanted to show you a close up of my, whoops, wildflower stitch marker, also from Twin Mountain Design, Twin Mountain Handcrafts, sorry, Twin Mountain Handcrafts. So there's the Bajagi shawl. Next is a lace panel, which I'm going to do in the bouquet section or the bouquet colorway. And then we have another mosaic section and finish it off with another garter section. So hopefully we get that done soon. I'm really excited about it. I love these colors. They're so happy. Also, look at this project bag. Isn't it so cute? I don't. This is the tag on it. Handmade by M-P-O-N. You can't see that. It's not going to focus. Maybe. I'm sorry. I am using my phone this time instead of my laptop. So the camera situation is kind of weird because on my laptop it's like right in the center and on my phone it's over here. So anyways, it's handmade by M-P-O-N. Nope, sorry. M-P-O-P-N. I'll have their link to their... Uh, Etsy shop. That's where I got this a while ago before the before the fees increased. I bought that one and I bought this one from them too. Super cute. Alrighty. Um, next, this is not a actual project yet, I guess. Uh, I swatched for it, which I never swatch. I didn't swatch for this. I don't know what's gotten into me, <laughs> but I swatched. I really wanted, I'm test knitting, and I really wanted to make sure that the cable showed up really, really well in this yarn. So I did a little test swatch, and I think the cable showed up beautifully. I am test knitting the Golden Hall Shawl by Common Threads. Common Thread Knitting is her handle on Instagram. And... This is going to be a gigantic, like 81 inches across gigantic shawl. It's going to be wonderful. Um, it's seed stitch and cable panels with a cable border. So I did my little swatch. This yarn is, actually I have skeins of it right here. <laughs> this is Sheep Graffiti. It is called... I named it, so I should know. Uh, homegrown Worsted. That's what it's called. It's Homegrown Worsted. The colorway is All That Ails You um, by Sheep Graffiti. 
and I have six skeins of this yarn for this project. This is a, it's a worsted weight as the name suggests. So I have six skeins of that. I have a sweaters quantity plus some, because I think I only used four skeins of this, but anyways, I have a lot of yarn. This, this project is going to be massive. I'm so excited though. This is the bag that it's being held in. This is by Cottontail Farm. I got this at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival that I went to at the beginning of May. I got this there. It's so cute. And it's what I hold my big like sweater projects in. I have one more project to show and then two future projects I think that I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, the next project I'm going to show is out of this yarn. This is Corydale Worsted by Labiana May. Labiana May, for those of y'all who don't know, is uh, from, she mills her own yarn, or she has her yarn milled just for her in Paris. Um, and this is one of them. So this is Corydale Worsted. It's Corydale wool, and I think it's Highland wool. Maybe. I don't remember. Falkland, Corydale, and Gotland, not Highland, Gotland. Okay, this is the color Anemone, and I am making a hat. This is the Ponderosa hat by Woolen Pine Designs. A super nice cable hat, and it's so squishy. I wish that, I wish y'all could just reach your hand through and feel this, because it's just, oh my gosh, it's wonderful. Again, a little more of a rustic wool. It is, it's softer than this. Um, but it is a little more on the rustic fuzzy side, non super wash, non treated. So it will felt. So this is obviously, I don't wash any of my hand mitts, but definitely not a washable item, but look at that stitch definition for those cables. I am so happy with this. Knitting with this yarn has been wonderful. I'm so excited to make several more. <laughs> I also have to show you the cutest little things that I got yesterday. These are brand new to me. We got these in at the store and I just ha like, I could not inventory and put them on the shelves without getting myself. Look at this. They're little elephant stitch stoppers. <laughs> so they just come right off and put them on the end of your needles to stop your stitches from falling off. I don't typically use these. For me, it's kind of just another thing to lose, but uh, I couldn't res These are so cute. I just couldn't not bring them home with me. <laughs> Anyways, I have two, one and a half or two cable repeats left before I start my decreases. The brim is going to be folded, but I will try it on real quick. Oh, I have a ponytail on. That's going to be awkward. Okay, hold on. Okay, now we'll try it on. So this, if I weren't folding my brim, I would have, I would start my de decreases like super soon, but I think that I want to fold it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the called for, the called for repeats. I'm going to keep going. I love it. It looks really good with my hair color. However, my hair color is changing next week. So hopefully it'll look good with my new hair color too. <laughs> I actually, if any of you guys follow like the, the store that I work at, the Facebook page, I do Facebook lives on there a lot. And one of our Facebook lives, or actually a couple of our Facebook lives and like our Instagram polls was me trying to decide which color I wanted to knit my hat out of as if I'm not going to make multiple, or at least multiple hats, maybe not the same pattern. Although this pattern was so fun. The cables are super intuitive. It was really, really nice to work on. I enjoyed it a lot. So I might make another one just like this. Actually, that's a lot. I have to. I'm teaching a class on this hat. I have to make another one. So I'll be making another one. But I did a poll and let people vote on what color they thought I should do. And this is the one that won. And I did tell them to keep in mind that my hair color would be different, but this one, this one won. So here we are. Um, so a little bit more about the pattern. I talked about it for a second, but a little bit more about the pattern. 
We have a couple of different cape styled cables going on in here, but they are incredibly simple and intuitive. Once you kind of get into the rhythm, they're pretty easy to follow. I am teaching a class on this because we are learning how to cable without a cable needle. If you're interested in learning how to cable without using a cable needle, this is an amazing pattern to start on because the cables are pretty simple and it's going to teach you a lot. And Woolen Pine Designs actually has videos linked in her pattern, in their pattern, um, for learning how to cable without a cable needle. So if you want to learn, check out this pattern. It's the best. Uh, the store also just got in uh, vegan pom-poms. And there's this, like, it's a super dark gray purple color that needs to go on top of this. So... I'm hoping to get this done within the next couple of days. Um, like I only have like two, so like two, less than two repeats, one and a half-ish repeats left and then my decreases. So hopefully I'll be able to get it done soon, but I haven't been knitting a ton really. We've been kind of busy with the house. We have guests coming at the end of the month. So we didn't have a guest room set up. So we've been working on that. Um, we just bought our first mower. For those of you who haven't been here the whole time or who don't know, I guess, uh, my partner and I just bought our house in the end of April, I think. <laughs> Sometime in April, we bought our house. So we're still very much in the set up and move in phase. Um, so we've been pretty busy with that. So I really haven't been knitting all that much, but hopefully I'll get this done soon. Oh, and... Surprise, another Twin Mountain Handcraft stitch marker. This one's a little coffee cup. They have a whole coffee set that I bought two of. I bought it twice. I'm getting pretty good at that. Okay. Um, my next cast on is, I'm going to cast on my... Um, my shawl that I'm test knitting, I'm going to cast that on pretty soon, the Golden Hall. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all, the Golden Hall shawl is inspired by Lord of the Rings. I am a huge Lord of the Rings fanatic. Um, it's inspired by King Theoden and Rohan, so all that ails you is the perfect color for this project, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, so I'm going to cast this on... I have to cast it on this weekend, so I'm going to cast it on this weekend. I think the official uh, test knit start date is, is it, I think it's tomorrow. So I'm planning on casting on either tomorrow night or Saturday morning after I go walk in the gardens. But um, there's a good chance I'll cast it on tomorrow night. But after that, I have a sweater project. This is called Sweater Weather. It is by Native Fibers. Megan, who I know will be watching this because she texted me yesterday and said, Katie, I need another podcast. So y'all can thank her for this. <laughs> so this is Megan's yarn in Sweater Weather in her Arctic DK base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I have several of them down here. I'm going to be making a sweater. I keep going back and forth. I think it's going to be the Easy V by Jessie Made Designs. I think that's the winner, but we'll know when I cast it on, okay? <laughs> that's how I work. I make very impulsive decisions at the last minute, and best laid plans never go, never go as I wanted them to. I have another, oh, I have another sweater project that I'm going to be casting on very soon. Uh, I don't know exactly when, but this is Sugar Plum Circus. This is my friend Jensen. Her and I met in Washington when I lived out there in Washington State. This is the color Thistle, and this is the color Moon. I ordered these to do, um, she provided yarn support for a sweater. I think it's called the Myra, M-Y-R-A-H, -Y I think is how you spell it. It's the Myra shawl. It's a color work, or shawl. Slow down. <laughs> the Myra sweater. It is a color work sweater. So I had my friend Jensen uh, make a little kit up for me. 
So this is the main color and this will be my color work. Um, Jensen's great. I actually ordered a different contrast color that I thought would work and she emailed me or I think she emailed me and she was like, look at these pictures and, and see if you like one of these better. I think they'll have more contrast. So I ended up going with this one, which I am really excited about. Um, the sweater pattern looks like so much fun. I have never done such a big color work project before. I've only done like a little bit of color work here and there. So this is going to be a great adventure. I'm very excited. Um, I don't know when that will get cast on because plans like we just talked about. I don't plan very well. I plan everything, but I rarely follow any of my plans. I usually just, my world is nonsense. It's great. I love it. Uh, <laughs> another exciting thing is look at my little yarn cubbies. So Alan built me some yarn shelves. I have them kind of filled up. I still have a suitcase of yarn over there that I haven't opened yet because I don't know how I'm going to organize things. But right now I have sock yarn. These are shawl projects that I already like have the yarn paired up together for. I don't have projects for all of these, but I have the yarn paired together. Down here is like some of my skeins that are already wound. They just don't fit up here nicely, so I put them down here. And then also, like, plant fibers are down here. So all my cottons and stuff. And over here we have DK weight single skeins. This is my, like, rustic fiber shelf. <laughs> so I have all my rustic fibers down here. Um, and these two are sweater quantities. So this is... Alan picked this out for a sweater for him. He also saw me unpacking these. These are 100% baby alpaca, but this is discontinued, and I didn't have enough to make him a sweater. So he did some internet research and found some on eBay and ordered it. So that should be in the mail in the next couple days. But I told him he's not getting his sweaters until it is freezing outside because he is always hot. So I'm not going to sit down and make him a sweater yet. He won't touch it until like the end of December. So he can wait. <laughs> I'm going to make me sweaters because even though it's 100 degrees outside, I'm wearing a wool sweater. So I get mine first. Anyways, I don't think I have a whole lot else to talk about. I'm going to cast those things on. I really want to finish this hat first. So I'm going to try to get this done tonight. So that I can just cast on a sweater and a giant shawl tomorrow night. That would be a fun way to spend a Friday. Um, I'm still doing classes at the store. I have a couple of slot classes going. This class is coming up. And the shawl class is about to uh, wrap up because we only have three sections left. And the mosaic was like the main thing that we needed to learn. Uh... They are pretty comfortable with like lace and one by one cables without a cable needle and stuff like that. So the lace and the other mosaic section will be pretty easy and, and the garter section will be easy. So we have our lace class coming up next week. And then after that, it'll be smooth sailing until we're all done. So that's exciting. That'll be done soon. I don't think I have much else to talk about um, as far as knitting. As far as like just what I've been up to. I don't feel like I've been doing that much, but then I also feel like I've been really busy. Um, Alan and I go to the garden. Uh, we have a botanical garden that's like right down the street from us. And we go there almost every weekend and go for walks, which has been super nice. They just opened the butterfly house. So we got to go in the butterfly house for the first time. And I was so excited. We, I made him just sit wide and make it. I mean, I did make him. I did. Um, <laughs> we just sat on one of the benches in the butterfly house for like a good 30 minutes before I was ready to leave because it was just so cool. Um, I obviously love butterflies, so <laughs> I was I was really excited that the butterfly house opened this month or last month. Um, other than that, getting guests ready, like I said. Um, 
And I feel like that's kind of it. I don't really watch a lot of TV. I watch a lot of podcasts, like a lot of knitting podcasts, but I don't really watch TV. I listen to audiobooks. I'm listening to uh, Lord of the Rings right now. <laughs> listening to The Fellowship of the Ring, the test, the test group that I'm doing the shawl with. We are also doing a book club, so we're listening to The Fellowship of the Ring or reading The Fellowship of the Ring while we knit our projects and... We have little book chats. Uh, I think the first one is tomorrow. Like the first um, video one. I could I could have totally just made that up. I don't know. I don't remember. Anyways, I'm listening to The Fellowship of the Ring right now. Um, I just reread the Brown Sister series by Talia Hibbert. Uh, I'm not going to remember all of the names. Actor Age Eve Brown, I think, is one is the first one, which is the first one that I read. And then something about Chloe Brown. Chloe Brown is the second sister in the series, and I just finished that one before I started Lord of the Rings, but I don't remember what the full title of the Chloe Brown book is. And I don't have my Kindle close by to look it up. But Tally Hibbert is one of my favorite authors. She is um, she's based in the UK. She lives in the UK. But her characters are phenomenal. Her, um, she does romance novels, which I love if they're done right. I'm picky about them, but when they hit my criteria, I adore them. She hits all of it. I need super strong female characters who enti whose entire life and identity does not involve a man. Um, <laughs> I like women who have goals and ambitions outside of finding their happily ever after. I like women who don't give up their goals and ambitions once they find someone that they want to be with. I don't like that. I think that's gross. Um, I don't like reading about it, I guess is what I should say. I don't, I don't enjoy reading characters that are like that. Uh, I like, I like my female characters to have their own identity outside of the relationship. I like the relationship to be Building them up and not making them, like, less, I guess. Anyways, I'll get off my, my soapbox. That was a pretty pretentious speech. That's just a personal thing. <laughs> personal opinion. I don't like reading that very much. But Talia Hibbert's female characters are incredibly strong. Uh, the relationships that she writes about are um, incredibly stable and emotionally supportive. And... I adore it so much. So I've read her Brown Sisters series. There's three of them in the series, and I've read them multiple times. They are, I think part of the reason that I like romance novels is because, aside from John Green, who I also love, but aside from John Green, most romance novels, you know they're going to end okay. Like, they're going to end happy, so you don't have to stress out too much while you're reading them. And sometimes when my life is kind of chaotic, I really enjoy a nice safe read where I know that everything's going to turn out okay. So then I just read Talia Hibbert all the time. <laughs> um, I think the last book before that that I finished was The Vine Witch. I haven't started the second one. The second one is The Glamorist and the third one's The Conjurer. I'm really excited for the third one because the character that is the main character in that one really interested me. The one who is the main character in the second one and the glamorist didn't really interest me when I was reading The Vine Witch, but I've heard other people say that, and I've heard that they said that it was really good anyway, so I'm going to read it. I just, it's been put off because I'm doing a book club now. Um, and The Name of the Wind by Patrick Ruthificus. Mm, I don't remember his last name. It starts with an R and it's kind of long. Uh, I just read The Name of the Wind, which is also the first in a series. I'm trying to find a couple books that I really like that are, like, series palette cleansers. I'm kind of getting invested in a lot of different series and then not focusing on one of them long enough to finish it. So, kind of like my projects. It's funny how that works. Um, other than that, I've just been hanging out with the animals and working a ton. I'm full-time at the store now, so I'm there just about every day. Um, every weekday, at least, which I have enjoyed so much. I'm really loving it. Uh, but I think that's about all I have for y'all today. I feel like I got really rambly. 
but that's all right. <laughs> You're here because you like to listen to me talk for some reason, right? Okay, I am gonna go. Uh, Aurora is, you can't see her, but Aurora is right on the other side of the shelf. Like, she's got her nose weaseled through. And because my partner's gaming rig is, like, right here. So she's trying to, like, get through and get to me. So <laughs> I'm going to go give her some snuggles. And I will talk to y'all next time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Later.